There are four types of tissues. We've already studied epithelium. Now let's look at connective tissue. Connective tissues are not really a, a catch-all category because they do share um, common features and common embryonic origin, but you can kind of think of them as like a catch-all category, if you will. They're found everywhere. Um, they're found um, in places in the skin. Fat is a connective tissue. Even blood and bone are connective tissues and cartilage, and then also ligaments and tendons. So it's one of the four primary types of body tissue. Connective tissue is found in between other types of body tissue. So what it does is it connects tissues. Um, for example, um, connecting a muscle to a bone or connecting a bone to a bone. Connective tissue is composed of really three things, specialized cells, extracellular protein fibers, and something called ground substance. So this large pink or purplish and this dark purple, those are fibers. Um, these things that look like cells are cells. They're the nuclei of cells, in some cases, the full cell itself. And then the ground substance would be this void or this space in between the fibers and the cells. So remember, we have these cells and then we have things outside the cell. Things outside the cell are called the extracellular matrix, and that would include the fibers and the ground substance. So let's just make sure that makes sense. We have the cells, and then outside the cells, we have fibers and the ground substance. So the ground substance and the fibers together are called the extracellular matrix. So let's look at those three things, specialized cells, protein fibers, and ground substance. There's lots of cells. We're only going to look at three. First, let's look at the fibroblast. The fibroblast is the most abundant cell in connective tissue. And that's what produces the protein fibers, the fibers that we'll talk about in just a moment, or the ones that you see here. Um, it's difficult to tell which cells are which, um, but the fibroblasts would be, um, would be, many of these would be fibroblasts. This one perhaps looks a little different. This one's probably not, but the other ones um, may be. Fibroblast under electron microscope looks kind of star-shaped like that. We also have macrophages. Phage um, means eating. It's, it's a Greek word for eating. So it phagocytizes pathogens. So if you have a pathogen or something that is able to penetrate your skin, um, the macrophages located within um, your dermis or within your skin will attack that pathogen and eat it up. So here's a picture of a macrophage engulfing some type of foreign particle. And then we also have mast cells. Mast cells um, release heparin and histamine. Here's a mast cell. And then if you look at um, another picture of a mast cell, you can actually see these granules inside. And these granules contain the heparin and the histamine. Um, so if there's an immune response that's um, that's initiated. These mast cells will like degranulate, or they'll release these granules, and then heparin and histamine will go into the surrounding tissue. Heparin is a blood thinner. It's also used as a medication, as um, a blood thinner, and like a clot buster. And then histamine, you're probably most familiar with, is it causes itching, but it's part of the immune response. We have extracellular protein fibers, collagen fibers. Those are the ones that um, we see here, these pink ones. They're abundant, they're thick, they're long, and they're straight. They don't branch. And notice I wrote, it's not very elastic. What that means is it doesn't stretch very, mu very much, and it resists that stretching sort of along its long axis. That's what tensile strength means. So even though it's flexible and it can bend, you can't stretch it very far. Unlike the elastic fibers, however, um, those do stretch. Those are the purple ones, the thin ones, the wavy ones. They branch a little bit um, and they can stretch up to like 150 times their, their original length and then still recoil back to original shape. And then lastly, we have these things called reticular fibers. The reticular fibers are highly branching, sort of interwoven. So all these dark lines are reticular fibers. This is a picture from the liver here. Uh, reticular fibers are less common, but they're very common in places like the liver and the spleen and the lymph nodes. It, it, it um, provides a, like a support network for other cells.
And then we have ground substance. The ground substance of connective tissue is a clear and colorless um, viscous mixture. And like we said before, the ground substance fills the spaces or fills the voids in between the cells and in between the fibers. Let's look at some of the characteristics of connective tissue. Connective tissue is loosely packed. You've seen this slide before when we looked at epithelium. Here's epithelium. Notice how close the cells are together. And then right deep to the epithelium is connective tissue. These purple things are the cells, maybe the fibroblasts. And notice how um, there's a lot of space in between them. So all the space in between those fibroblasts or those cells are the fibers. So the cells are loosely packed. If they're loosely packed, that means there's an abundant abundance of extracellular matrix. Unlike epithelium, connective tissue is not found on exposed surfaces. It's abundant and widely distributed throughout the body. Find it almost everywhere. There's various levels of vascularity. For example, um, just in the skin here, we would have lots of blood vessels, um, but a tendon or ligament or cartilage has very little um, blood flow. So the function of connective tissue, it binds structures. For example, this tendon here and this ligament, those are binding bone to bone and muscle to muscle provides support and protection. So remember, this is the epithelium we're looking at. And then right deep to the epithelium is the connective tissue. So it provides both physical support and protection, but also um, immunologically as well. Remember, we said that the, the, um, uh, the macrophages and the mast cells are located down here. So it's also providing immune support. Here's more protection. This is a fibrous capsule and fat tissue surrounding the kidneys protects it. It fills spaces, um, even spaces like around and behind your eye. Stores fat. I don't need to show you any pictures of fat storage. Protects against infection. We mentioned that with the um, mast cells or the, the phagocytites, uh, uh, the macrophages rather. Produce blood cells. That happens in the bone marrow. We'll talk about that later and repairs damaged tissues. Now this is a really, um, there's a lot going on here. So this is the types of connective tissue. We're gonna distill this down and make this much more simple. We're gonna look at loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and cartilage. Even though bone and blood and lymph are types of connective tissue, we'll save those for later when we actually talk specifically about bones and blood. So now we'll just look at loose, dense, and cartilage. First, let's look at loose connective tissue. That's the packing material of the body. That's the stuff that fills the spaces between organs, provides cushion, supports the epithelium like we saw in the last picture, supports and surrounds blood vessels and nerves, also lipid storage or fat storage, provides a route for diffusion of materials. Remember, a epithelium, it doesn't have any um, blood vessels, so the connective tissue provides support in that sense. And generally, most of the volumes occupied by ground substance. When we look at, sorry, when we look at dense connective tissue, um, that provides strength and support. In this case, most of it's not ground substance, but most of the volume are the fibers, those collagen and elastic fibers we talked about. So first, let's look at loose connective tissue. There's three types, areolar, or this is just oftentimes called loose connective tissue, and there's adipose tissue, which is fat, and then there's reticular tissue as well. Let's look at loose connective tissue or areolar tissue first. That's like the picture we saw before. Notice these fibers and these cells are loosely packed. The fibroblasts here are the purple cells, and then these thick pink, Fibers, those are collagen. And then these smaller fibers here that are following my arrow, those are the elastic fibers. And the rest of the stuff would be um, the ground substance. And everything that's not a cell, remember, is part of the extracellular matrix. So there's some more areolar tissue or loose connective tissue right deep to the skin. So remember, this is the epithelium of the skin. This is right deep to the skin. See how this is like a light pink? 
And then if we go deeper still, this is a different type of connective tissue. This is dense connective tissue. We'll look at that next. But right now we're concerned with this loose connective tissue here. Notice the cells are far apart. We see some fibers. We don't see real thick fibers, though. So this is loose connective tissue here. Here's some more loose connective tissue. These big pink fibers would be collagen. These darker purple ones are elastic fibers. And remember, these other um, cells are most likely the fibroblasts. Here's some more areolar or loose connective tissue. Notice we see it um, as a different color. That's just a different stain. It's surrounding an artery. This is skeletal muscle. You see the cell is running this direction. And on either side of the cell, we have this loose connective tissue acting as like a packing material. Now we're looking at um, the small intestine here. We've seen this. These are the epithelium. But then deep to the epithelium, we have this loose connective tissue. Notice um, the fibers. You can see them. Here's another image of the small intestine. This is the simple columnar epithelium we discussed. And then right deep to that, we see loose connective tissue. Oftentimes, just deep to, to epithelium, we see loose connective tissue. So all this stuff here and even this stuff down here is loose, loose connective tissue. This is muscle down here. Adipose tissue or fat. So these are just fat cells and there's the nucleus. It's a cartoon of it, of course, but this is the real thing. This is under a slide. Notice that you don't really see the fat. That's because in the, um, in the process of preparing the slide, that fat gets washed out. But these are the adipocytes, or these are the fat cells. And then you can see the nuclei there. There's another image. Here's a zoomed-in image over here. There's the nucleus, and all this space would be where the fat was. There's some other types of connective tissue, it seems, too. Here's some more fat tissue. Notice we have loose connective tissue around the vein. Here's some more connective tissue. But then here we have the adipocytes, or the fat cells. So I want to show you this, because you can see how the fat cells are mixed in with other types of cells. So we're looking at mucus gland cells and outer airway wall. I don't really know what this is, but, but what we have is um, fat cells mixed in with other types of, or adjacent to other types of cells. Let's look at reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue, like I mentioned, we're gonna see only really in the spleen and the liver and some of the lymphoid organs, like, like the lymph nodes. Reticular fibers oftentimes have a different stain that highlights their fibers, um, but they're usually stained dark. You can see the reticular fiber there. Here's some more reticular fibers. We're looking at the um, spleen in this case. These black fibers are the reticular fibers. Notice they're not really straight. They branch, go in all directions. Um, this is from a lymph node. The black fibers here would be the reticular fibers. And this is just a zoomed in picture of the same thing. The black fibers are the reticular fibers. So this is another lymph node. All right, now let's look at dense connective tissue. There's three kinds, regular, irregular, and elastic. <clears throat> let's look at dense regular tissue. In dense regular tissue, the collagen fibers are densely packed. And this is key here. They run parallel to each other or to some applied force. Examples would be tendons, remember that connects muscle to bone, aponeuroses, here's a aponeurosis here, that's nothing more than like a flat broad tendon, still connects muscle to bone. Elastic tissue, which I've also circled, we're not really going to do too much with that, I just wanted to show you a picture of that, and then a ligament which attaches a bone to a bone. Um, so here's elastic tissue. Um, notice elastic tissue, we see the parallel fibers. It's hard to tell what the fibers are, um, but they're more, they're more um, elastic fibers are more abundant than collagen fibers. But we see that in places like this interspinous ligament here. So that's why I included um, sort of this picture here, and I circled the elastic tissue just so you would see it. All right, we're going to focus our time now on regular or dense regular connective tissue. So here we go. Here's some examples. Notice the fibroblasts here. Here's another one. And then we have these collagen fibers, and notice that they run parallel to each other. They're all sort of stacked up, running in the same direction. 
So we find dense regular connective tissue in, um, alongside skeletal muscles, um, tendons and aponeuroses, in ligaments, and in uh, fascia. And obviously the function here is they're all running in the straight, same direction, so they resist, they resist forces. Um, in that plane. So they provide services for attachment and support stabilization. Here's a muscle. This is a tendon. This isn't a great slide, but you can see the fibers are running parallel to each other. Here's a better picture. Um, this is muscle tissue. We'll learn how to identify that um, next, or in a few days rather. But here what we see is these fibroblasts here, and then these collagen fibers in between them. They're running parallel to each other. Here's some more dense regular connective tissue. This is from a tendon. You can see all the fibroblasts. The fibroblasts are lined up as well, so it's not just the, the fibers. So here's the collagen fibers, fibroblasts. This is the same tendon, just this picture is more zoomed in. Notice how thick those fibers are. Here's another picture of a tendon, slightly different coloring. Uh, but same thing, fibroblasts are lined up, lots of space in between the fibroblasts, and that's the, the parallel running collagen fibers. Here's another one. See the collagen fibers running in this direction here. This is a tendon under low power. Here's that same tendon under high power. You also notice how these fibroblasts are, are kind of like flattened out. So even though we see waves there, they're all still parallel to each other. So it's dense, regular connective tissue. Here's dense, irregular connective tissue. So dense, irregular connective tissue is in places where we have stresses in various directions. So you see the collagen fibers running, um, not parallel to each other anymore, but in all directions. We see that in the dermis of the skin, in the GI tract, the respiratory tract, and also in these capsules that, that surround the organs, like the kidney. So here's some dense irregular connective tissue. So same as before, we have these cells here um, that are you know, not close together, they're far apart, and we still have these thick bundles of collagen, but now they're running in, in, in sort of ran, random directions. So here's where that'd be located in the skin there. So we looked at the loose connective tissue right deep to the epithelium, but then deep to the loose connective tissue, here's where we get the dense irregular connective tissue. So notice the thick bands of collagen. And in this particular section, you know, they're running all sorts of ways. So we can see some probably running parallel to the plane um, or perpendicular to the plane of the screen. Here's one running parallel to the plane of the screen. So same thing though, thick collagen fibers running all sorts of directions. Here's the skin. This is uh, the dermis, just zoomed in. And then here we are, um, same picture, just zoomed in even further. So now we can see the fibroblasts. So those are the purple cells. And then these red things are, again, the collagen fibers. Here's more dense irregular tissue. This looks different, but it's just a different magnification with a different stain. Here we have a nucleus. We see a collagen fiber running this way. And then these are all collagen fibers running in other directions. All right, now let's look at cartilage, three kinds. We have hyaline, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. Let's look at hyaline cartilage first. We find hyaline cartilage um, at, at the articulating surface between two bones. Like this is the shoulder joint, for example. So if someone has um, arthritis, osteoarthritis, this would be deteriorated. Or if you've ever seen the, the white part on a chicken bone and end of a chicken bone, that's the hyaline cartilage. The best way to identify the hyaline cartilage is looking at the extracellular matrix and notice that it's glassy. In fact, I think that's what hyaline means. It means something related to glass. So it's sort of a smooth glass. This matrix is, has fibers in it, but you don't see them. And like I said, we see that um, where the two bones touch. We also see that in the larynx, that's the voice box, and the trachea, that's your windpipe, um, and even in the nasal septum and some other parts like the bronchi. Here's more hyaline cartilage. Um, notice the glassy appearance here. Um, oh, I should mention, I didn't mention that. The, these are called chondrocytes. The cells 
of cartilage are called chondrocytes. Chondro means cartilage, and of course, site means cell. And these chondrocytes sit in like these little, like craters called lacunae. There's just one of them, it's a lacuna. But the chondrocytes are cells found within cartilage, and they sit in lacuna or lacunae. So these would be chondrocytes sitting in little um, cavities or, or lacunae. So here we can see the chondrocytes. The extracellular matrix is glassy, so it's hyaline cartilage. This is the nasal septum. There's a lot going on here, but notice this part that's labeled hyaline cartilage. We can see the lacunae and the chondrocytes pretty well, and the extracellular matrix is glassy. Here's um, hyaline cartilage from a monkey larynx or a monkey voice box. This is under low power. We can see the chondrocytes sitting in the lacunae. And then notice this extracellular matrix looks like glass, kind of kind of shines and there's no fibers present. Here's the same thing under high power. Notice we still don't see any fibers, but you can see the chondrocytes really well. Let's look at fibrocartilage now. Fibrocartilage is a very tough type of cartilage. It's in the meniscus in knees or the pads within knee joints. It's also in the pubic symphysis and um, in the intervertebral discs, these discs that um, lie in between the vertebra. So here's a great picture of a chondrocyte. The chondrocyte is sitting in a lacuna. So the chondrocytes look the same, um, but what's different is we have these fibers that are present. Notice these thick fibers. Here's some fibro cartilage. The chondrocytes um, should look familiar to you. And now it's not glassy anymore, but we have these we have these fibers running parallel to each other. Here's the same fibro car cartilage just under higher power. We can see the chondrocytes, and then there's um, abundant fibers, lots of extracellular matrix. Here's fibro cartilage under low power. You can see the chondrocytes still. If we zoom into medium power, the chondrocytes become more prominent. You can still see these um, fiber-like things. They don't look as fibrous as the previous slide because this is a different stain. Here we can see those fibers under high power as well and a great shot of the chondrocytes sitting in the lacunae. Here's some more fiber cartilage. See these fibers running parallel to each other. Looks a little like hyaline cartilage, so sometimes it's hard to tell. Here's some more fiber cartilage. Here's some fiber cartilage, which a different stain. Um, this stain really reveals the, the fibers well. We can see the chondrocytes. Here's another slide of some fiber cartilage. Chondrocytes are visible. We can, we can see the, the wavy fibers. This is the intervertebral disc, so a disc in between the vertebrae. Uh, we can't tell what's going on here under low power too well or medium power. We zoom in a little bit, and we can see the chondrocytes, and then we see the fibers that are um, that are running there. So lastly, we have elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage um, is similar, but we have elastic fibers, as you might have guessed. So we still have these lacunae, and we still have the chondrocytes that are inside the lacunae. The difference is we have these sort of darkened, um, dark stained elastic fibers. So here we are. This is a great picture. Here's a chondrocyte sitting in the lacuna. And then the extracellular matrix has these elastic fibers visible. Here's a different stain. We still see the chondrocytes, but then these darker fibers here, um, those are the elastic fibers. This is elastic cartilage from an epiglottis. That's the flap that closes when you, when you swallow, keep food from going down your trachea. Notice the fibers are in red now, not purple. And this time the elastic fibers are in black. So this is just different staining. So you have to be aware that the different stains look differently. Here's an ear. Ear has elastic cartilage. And elastic cartilage, um, it's only found a few places. The ear is one of them. And you can't tell what's going on under low power. But as we zoom in, you begin to see the chondrocytes here. As we get in even further, you can see that it kind of looks like hyaline cartilage. Um, but even, even further still, that this isn't quite glassy. We, we do see these um, 
these elastic fibers running running through there. So here's a good summary: hyaline cartilage, the extracellular matrix is glass-like, fibro cartilage, you'll see some fibers, and then elastic cartilage. There's, there's a lot of cellularity. There's lots of cells, but then there's also these elastic fibers in between.